How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay, and today we're gonna talk about ETFs. If you followed me for a while, you know I'm a big fan of investing in ETFs, but today we're gonna do something a little different. That's because I have scoured the universe of ETF offerings, and I have found the five worst ETFs on the market. And this list of the worst ETFs isn't just because they're down a whole lot on the year, or just because I don't like what they invest in. These are ETFs that I think if you're actually holding these, you might wanna take a long, hard look at what you're doing with your money. Spoiler alert, I'm not even gonna use this list of worst ETFs on the market to take any cheap shots at Kathy Wood and her ARK Invest ETFs. So sit back, hit the like button on this video, and let's have some fun looking at what I think are five of the worst ETFs that you can have in your portfolio. And first up is ticker symbol RSX, the Vanek Russia ETF. Really, need I say more? This ETF invests solely into Russian stocks. The Russian stock market relies almost solely on the energy sector and wasn't on the most solid of footing to begin with. But now, with Russia invading Ukraine and the United States, along with most other world powers, enacting a lot of bans on Russian products and a lot of other strong economic actions against the country of Russia, the Russian stock market is even more fragile than it was before. And thus, this ETF became even more volatile than it was to begin with. But beyond the macroeconomic factors of what's happening in Russia, this ETF wasn't a great one to begin with. It was heavily top-weighted in just a small number of Russian companies. And with an expense ratio of 0.7%, it's bordering on the upper limits of what I would accept tolerable for an ETF I would want to invest in to begin with. And to top it all off, the RSX ETF was down 78% year-to-date before trading on the ETF was halted until further notice on March 4th due to all the economic sanctions and bans on trading of Russian stocks. So thankfully, you can't buy RSX right now even if you wanted to, but if you were holding it before March 4th, all you got out of this ETF was a world of pain. Next up on our list of the worst ETFs that you can be holding in your portfolio is ticker symbol SQQQ, ProShares Ultra Pro Short QQQ ETF. Now, as you can probably derive from that name, SQQQ is a ETF that is short QQQ, which is the NASDAQ 100 index. But SQQ isn't just short the QQQ ETF, it is a triple leveraged inverse ETF of the NASDAQ 100. So to put that in simple terms, this ETF uses margin and a lot of derivative investments to attempt to return the results of the NASDAQ 100 times minus three. That means for every 1% the NASDAQ 100 or QQQ ETF rises, SQQQ will fall 3%. And on the flip side, if the NASDAQ 100 falls by 1%, SQQQ will rise by 3%. That means by investing in the SQQQ ETF, you are taking a large and strong bet against companies like Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Tesla. Obviously, I don't wanna tell you what to do with your money, but that's not a bet I'm gonna be making. But it's not just the fact that I don't think you'd wanna be short the most powerful companies in the US stock market. Even for the most bearish investor, this ETF isn't a long-term hold. That's because it uses margin positions and other derivative contracts that erode in value quite quickly. So even in a bear market like we've been experiencing so far this year, this ETF can cause you to lose money simply by holding it for too long. It's really more aimed at the day trader set looking to make large leverage bets against the NASDAQ 100 intraday movements. And if you're enjoying this list so far, be sure to hit the like button down below on this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If it didn't help, I wouldn't ask. And now let's get on to the third ETF in the list of the worst ETFs on the stock market. And this one is ticker symbol BITO. 
the ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF. And the introduction of Bitcoin ETFs has been a hotly anticipated and hotly debated topic for quite some time. And to see why BITO is making this list of the worst ETFs that you can be holding, we just have to look at the ETF website. First, if we take a look at the investment objective, the ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF is the first Bitcoin linked ETF offering investors an opportunity to gain exposure to Bitcoin returns in a convenient, liquid and transparent way. The fund seeks to provide capital appreciation primarily through managed exposure to Bitcoin futures contracts. And if you don't know why that last sentence in that paragraph was extremely important, we can just take a look at the giant blue box on the right-hand side of the page saying important considerations. The first bullet point, the fund does not invest directly in Bitcoin. That's because direct investment of Bitcoin by ETFs is still illegal. That's still something they're working out regulations for and hasn't been approved. The second bullet point there, the price and performance of Bitcoin futures should be expected to differ from the current spot price of Bitcoin. The spot price of Bitcoin, of course, being the Bitcoin to US dollar price that you always hear quoted, i.e. Bitcoin is at $25,000, Bitcoin is at $50,000, and so on. So this Bitcoin ETF doesn't actually hold any Bitcoin, and it says the price movements of the ETF should be expected to differ from the price movements of Bitcoin. If you want to invest in Bitcoin, just invest directly in Bitcoin. This isn't 2012 anymore. It's not a complicated process. There are plenty of reputable and easy to use cryptocurrency brokerages out there for you to directly invest into Bitcoin through. So there's really no need to hold this or any of the other Bitcoin focused ETFs that are currently out there. If you want Bitcoin, just buy it directly. Now moving right along to the next ETF that I think is one of the worst ETFs out there on the market is ticker symbol, BIZD, the VanEck BDC Income ETF. This is an ETF that invests in business development companies. And these business development companies or BDCs are traded as a type of closed end fund. And their whole purpose is to spur lending on a business to business basis. So these business development companies invest in small businesses by investing in them through equity or debt or other means, which give those companies the liquidity they need to grow their business. In turn, the business development companies get a nice return on their money, which they pass back through to their investors in the form of generally high dividends. But this ETF is making this list of the worst ETFs for one reason and one reason only. It has a 10.07% expense ratio. That is my fifth take trying to say that, and I still couldn't say it without laughing. That means for every $10,000 you're investing in the BIZ ETF, you're losing about $1,000 right off the top to management fees. To be a little fair to the ETF, the reason the management fee is 10% and listed so high, it's because this is a fund of funds. The holdings of this ETF are all those closed end fund business development companies we just talked about. Each one of those has their own expense ratio and those expenses get passed along to you as the holder of BIZD and they have to report what those are. So over 9% of this 10% expense ratio is just coming from the closed end funds it's holding. The fund managers of the BIZD ETF themselves are only taking out a little over 1%. But still, that is a reason you gotta be careful and a reason why these fund of fund kind of ETFs and mutual funds you have to really take a close look at. Now this next ETF comes from a segment that is near and dear to my heart. This is a high dividend yield ETF, specifically ticker symbol KBWD. The Invesco KBW High Dividend Yield Financial ETF. This is a dividend focused ETF that specifically focuses on investing in dividend paying companies from the financial sector. And many, many, many of its top holdings are REITs or real estate investment trusts. The KBWD ETF has a dividend yield of over nine and a half percent. So where are we going wrong? 
why is this ETF one that's making your list of the worst ETFs on the market? And again, it's because of the expense ratio. The KBWD ETF has an expense ratio of 2.59%. That means for every $10,000 you're investing into this ETF, you're losing $259 per year to fees. And there are just way too many really great dividend ETFs out there on the market that aren't charging you over 2.5% for the pleasure of holding them. It's not like this ETF is really doing anything spectacular to make up for that expense ratio. Over the last three years, the KBWD ETF is lagging SCHD in performance by over 45%. Come on, Jay, that's not a fair comparison. With a 9.5% dividend yield, this is obviously for income, not growth. So let's compare it to another ETF that is all about the income it provides and not necessarily the overall growth. Everyone's favorite, QYLD. And over that same time frame, KBWD is underperforming QYLD by about 2%. But that's before we consider that the QYLD expense ratio is 0.6% and KBWD's expense ratio is 2.59%. That is a huge, huge difference. So if you wanna check out some dividend ETFs that are much better options for your portfolio, I think you should start with this video right here. And if you're interested in some ETFs that you can just buy in your portfolio and hold forever, check out this video down here. I hope you enjoyed this video, it was a fun one to make. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one.